Hey everybody, welcome back to Grumpy Acres. Man, I do not know what the deal is. Every time I say we need to give people an update on the chicken coop, it snows. Look at this. It snowed enough yesterday that I ended up with a snow day from work because they shut down operations. Um, not nearly as cold as it was last time it snowed. But it's, it's enough to make it so it's a little bit uncomfortable at times, especially once the sun starts going down like it is now. So I've got just enough time to give you guys an update on what we've got done on the chicken coop in the last couple of weeks. First off, we had about a week and a half where both of us were sick and we did not get anything done outside. It was, it was cold. And we were both down at, at different times, like I said in the, the Hunter subscriber video. But that's over. I got, a, I got a, an entire weekend to work on it last weekend. And with the snow day yesterday, uh, I was able to get work done on it. I spent about eight hours out here working on it yesterday. So let's check out what we got done. First off, and most importantly, we got the roof on. I don't know if you can see it. But you can see the edge of the tin roof sticking out. Now, I was going to crawl up there and show you a video up there of it. But since it snowed, it's covered with ice and snow. And I don't feel like breaking my neck trying to show you guys what a great job I did with the roof. I also got... You can see them up there. I also got all the transom windows in and I'll show you how I did that on the inside now the next big accomplishment I got done I got windows installed I got two of the three windows installed uh, there's one here and there's one on the opposite end um, that we got done yesterday uh, we also got siding up on the outside and we got some siding up on the inside we we decided to use all the extra siding we had on the inside and outside of this thing because the osb we're going to need for the flooring inside the house and then let's walk around and back and here's the next thing we got done so i got i got the big open part up here covered up i got wiring in and then down on the bottom i got the skirting all the way around on the inside and on the outside of the run portion so the only thing we need to get done on the outside run portion to make it functional is to get a door in. And then down there where the uh, door from the coop is, I've got to get a platform and a, and a little ramp for the, for the chicken so they can come out. And this is going to be during the day when we're not free roam or, you know, days where we can't free roam them. Uh, we're going to leave them locked up in here. It's secure enough that uh, they should be okay. And then... In this area right here that we have to clean up, all this, this area right here down over to where those trees are, we're going to put field fence up and we're going to plant miniature fruit trees on the inside of the fence. That way the goats and the sheep can't get to them and when the, any fruit that falls on the ground the chicken can eat and the chickens will take care of the bugs and worms trying to attack those fruit trees. So it's, it's a, mul a whole multi-purpose thing going on there where they're, they're mutually beneficial. One thing about this siding down here. So what this is, is that's plastic. We bought, oh gosh, we probably bought a hundred of these four foot long by two and a half foot wide panels uh, of that corrugated plastic. And uh, we were using it, we used it on the, top of the loafing shed at the old house and we used it for a couple other things and uh i decided i'm cutting it into strips and then i'm placing it down along the bottom and i'm skirting the entire bottom of the the chicken coop and i'll work it i'll work it around the outside and, and go all the way around and what that'll do is uh, number one it'll keep the cold air from getting underneath there it'll help insulate the un underneath it and number two it'll keep critters from crawling underneath there and making house uh underneath there so that's you know, we, we got it at a really good price, and we haven't haven't used it for like the last four or five years, except for the loafing shed and a couple of small projects. So that's what we're going to use that for. And there you can see the other window. 
I've still got a on both ends I still got a clad it some siding up there on the top and then I've got uh, access to some soffit material so I'm gonna put a soffit all the way around it to help help give it airflow and, and, and insulate it a little bit all right let's go inside and check it out one of the things I did get accomplished yesterday was I made this door so it at least latch still not latching properly it's still crooked but at least it's latching so that the wind's not blowing it open we had a snow here about a week and a half ago and it blew the the door open at night and there was all kinds of snow and stuff on the inside so that's a big thing as you can see we've got siding and insulation up and we've got it got almost all the way around the insulation almost all the way around um, we still got this wall right here that we need to do but I got, I'm putting a window in right there where that Tyvek tape is. So we can't put the insulation in until that's done. And then I've got to block off the top. I'm going to get the soffit material in and then I'm going to block that and put, uh, put some insulation in there. Now Yoda went out and bought several different types of chicken feeders. And I'm going to give you guys a video on these things uh, separate from this because... These are all brand new. We had the money and we decided we're, we're going to have so many chickens and turkeys that we needed some new ones. And so we bought several different types and I'll, I'll show you how they work and, and what they are in a different video. <clears throat> so as you can see, like I said, we got the windows in. We got siding up on the inside. So here's the door going out in the run and all I did was make a slider. So this goes up and down. And when we get the chickens over here, hopefully this next weekend, um, I'm just going to make it so I can lift this up and pin it in place and then take the pin out and have it come back down. But eventually there's going to be an eye hook in the top of this 2x4. It's going to run up to the roof and go outside of where the cage is so we can haul it up and latch it and have it stay up and then we can put it down. And eventually we're talking about maybe trying to find an electric door or something that we can use instead of having to do it manually. We get it on it, get it on an electric door, put it on a timer so it, it opens and closes by itself. Now this back window, I'm gonna have to screen that in because where we're standing right now is, is where the coop's gonna be. And I want to be able to open that window up and not have coons and possums get inside here and, and kill the animals. We had that happen at the old place. And it's not good. You know, even though it's really cold, I can work inside now and not be freezing because of the wind chill. I mean, the wind chill this morning was like negative three, negative six, somewhere around there. And I came in here and checked it out this morning, and it was considerably warmer in here just because they, the cold wind wasn't cutting through and, and uh, making it uncomfortable. So on the transom windows, what I did was I took silicone caulking put it all the way around put the windows up and then there's just three strips of wood holding that in and it's nice and tight i was up there yesterday and the snow had built up against the windows and there was no water coming in when it was starting to melt and I, it's going to work really well i think the only finish work i need to do up there at this point aside from blocking that off once i get the soffit in is I've got to go through and I've got to great stuff all the cracks and make it so it's airtight and then I eventually I'm, I'm gonna try to put trim up there and make it look nice as I've said before the chickens really don't care what it looks like um, so that's not high on the priority list another one of the projects we got to do to get this finished is we've got two things of linoleum that we're gonna put linoleum down in the entire thing so it's easy to clean. So that's one of the reasons why we put the siding on the inside is because we wanted to be durable and, and be able to handle the chickens getting in here. And then right here where, where we're standing, I've got to put uh, got to put a, a two by four wall up and clad it with, with wire and make it so the chickens can't get through so that they're nice and secure in the coop area. So the final project we got to do in here I got to get it done before March 15th, I think. 
Yoda said, is I've got to build brooding boxes here. And I'm going to make pretty good size. I'm going to make a good size brooding box on the bottom. And then I'm going to put a shelf up here where we can brood chickens up here as well. Um, haven't, haven't really figured out exactly how we're going to do that because I've, I've got to worry about moisture getting onto the wood and, and maybe soaking down through the bottom. So I, that's, that's still up in the air. But as you can see, we did get a lot done. And we're, we're hoping that, that barring any unfortunate circumstances in the next two or three days, we're going to be able to get the coop and the run finished to the point where we can bring our chickens over. Um, the people that are, that are hosting our chickens right now have their own chickens coming in. And because we've got all the babies, we want to get our chickens over here and get them quarantined and make, make sure that we've got 20, 30 days for them to make sure they're not sick and carrying anything that would, that would hurt the babies. Um, oh, and one more thing we got to do is we've got to run electrical circuits in here. Um, our electrician is having some some they're having some operation done in the family so they're he's not available right now so we're gonna have to we're gonna retrofit this we're gonna put some circuits in uh so that in the beginning we can run it off of a uh extension cord from the house uh but eventually there's gonna be a, a electrical hookup for an rv out here and we're gonna run electric off of it and bring it over here so we'll have we'll have three plug-ins for heat lamps for the brooders and light or something in here for the uh for the chickens maybe heat lamp for the uh keep the water from freezing uh we're not quite sure yet how we're gonna what, what all we're gonna do um we used to keep a heat lamp on on the chickens all winter long uh more so they would lay eggs all winter versus keeping warm but it did help keep the water from freezing which is a big issue um but we're going to change that. I think right now it looks like we're not going to put lamps on them in the winter time. Uh, insulate this place. Hopefully the the warmth from all the chickens being in here will keep it warm enough that nobody's freezing. And uh, we'll figure out the water. We're thinking uh, buying some heated heated waters at some point uh, to make it through the winter. But that's by the time we get the chickens in, it's not going to be freezing that often. So that's not really going to be a problem once the chicks are here and they're they're brooded and everything. So we're not going to worry about that until next fall. Uh, all in all, really happy with what we got done the past couple of days. Man, I'm telling you that, that being sick and the cold weather and, and not being able to work outside just really put a damper on things. Uh, makes it makes it hard to run a homestead when you're when you're down like that. You know, Yoda, Yoda was feeling better. And, and while I was working on Saturday and Sunday and yesterday, she came in and she's the one that actually put all the insulation up. Again, she learned about 16 inches on center and 24 inches on center. And there's, <laughs> there's, some, uh, there's some insulation in here that's made for 24 inches on center. She, she couldn't figure out why it wasn't fitting right. And uh, I pointed it out. She thought it was she thought it was poor manufacturing, but she just got the wrong type. But that's okay. It works. It works, and it's, it's insulated nice. I mean, you can tell the difference in here when, when the door's not open from from being outside. When it, whenever we're working in here. Uh, all right. So I'm gonna let you go. You know, here's my here's my thing for you today. I want everybody to go out and and do something. Do something to make your homestead better. <clears throat> if you're not on a homestead yet and you're, you're working towards it, go out and learn a skill. Learn a skill that will help you once you start homesteading. I mean, you can never, you can never get too much knowledge and it's free and it doesn't, well, knowledge isn't free. You, you got to work at it, but it doesn't weigh anything. So once you've got it inside your noggin, you can carry it around with you wherever you go. All right, till next time, once you go out and live a life done free, Grumpy G clear.
Thanks, Milo.